So it's uh, great to be here today. As Kristin said, my name is Helgi, and I'm head of operations intelligence at ActivityStream. Now, I've been interested in uh, artificial intelligence for a very long time, maybe I should say obsessed. It's always seemed to me like uh, the most fascinating processes we can observe in nature, and reproducing them would be one of the most interesting things we could ever hope to do on machines. In this talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about activity stream, and I'm going to give you a real-world example of uh, AI collaboration between industry and academia right here in Iceland. And finally, a little vision of uh, how uh, AI is likely to change the way industry operates. But first, what is operations intelligence? So Gartner has defined this uh, operations intelligence platform as a suite of development and runtime software tools that monitor, alert, and support interactive decision making by providing data and analytics about current conditions. Now you can really think of this as a subset of AI. To be precise, uh, that means artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science. These all overlap, but are not exactly the same. So Activity Stream is a fully funded Icelandic startup. We are officially a little over two years old now. And it was founded by entrepreneurs Stefan Baxter and Einar Sævarsson. By now, we have 35 employees across three countries. So the uh, headquarters are here in Iceland. And we have a sales office in Copenhagen and a development team in Serbia as well. We are making an operations intelligence platform. And uh, it's a general platform that we tailor and implement for specific domains. We got started in uh, live entertainment and sports. You can really think about that as ticketing. And then later moved on to uh, energy management. Now, these domains are deliberately very different because it was important to us to establish early that we were not just a ticketing analytics platform. We really were a general uh, operations intelligence solution. In ticketing, uh, we are already serving market-leading enterprises on both sides of the Atlantic, so Scandinavia uh, and the US. Our mission is to empower people with intelligence when they need it. And we think the best way to do that is by coming the AI-powered magic to-do list for enterprises that is constantly answering the question, what is happening right now within my organization that, if I knew about it, would allow me to be more effective at my job? And it's a solution for everyone, all employees, not just management. We provide advanced business AI to enterprises as a service, and we have a strong focus on ethical AI application. So how does it work? We unify data streams from diverse customer IT systems. Uh, that means that the barriers between the data located in different systems disappear, and we can holistically analyze the data. We enrich and analyze this unified stream in real time and we generate fresh, actionable observations and deliver to the right people when we find uh, things that employees should know about. Now, an actionable observation is really just a, a clearly summarized piece of information uh, that something important happened and gives you some guidance on how you can react to it. We also have very nice uh, real-time dashboards and uh, reporting capabilities. So visually, it looks like this. Now, this is just for one customer who is uh, streaming data into our platform from uh, his various IT systems. We have transactional data from the point of sale systems. We have website traffic, uh, customer data. And we then also uh, enrich this with external data, like weather, for example, if that's relevant, or currency exchange rates might be another example. So anywhere we can uh, 
increase the analytical value of the data and deepen, deepen its context. <coughs> to implement and uh, deliver operations intelligence, we've created uh, some AI agents. And these agents are experts in different areas of the business. So you can see a few examples here. We have a dedicated agent that uh, is a specialist in security and fraud, another one for finance and business operations, Providencia is in charge of predictive analysis, and uh, Saxon is our uh, customer relationship management expert. And we've actually already started turning these agents into chatbots, so uh, in the future you'll be able to ask and actually have conversations about your business using natural language. So just a few examples of uh, what these agents do. So if there's a suspicious purchase being made by one of your customers, we'll make a fraud observation or potential fraud observation. And here's an example of that. Here we have a customer uh, in Norway who's making a large uh, amount of orders in a short amount of time across vast geographical distances. There's no way he could be traveling between that fast. So you might want to call that customer and uh, verify the order. If we discover that a customer coming to your show has a major birthday, like here, Christian is uh, turning 50 when he's coming to, coming to the show, we'll create a customer moment observation. So you can give him a warm welcome, put a birthday card in his seat, We also have neural network generated sales predictions for products that are being sold that predict not only how sales are gonna turn out in the end, but also how the sales curve is gonna unfold through time. That is critical for knowing uh, when, when to optimize your marketing, if that's relevant. So it looks like here we have an Elvis tribute concert in Denmark that has uh, predicted sales just under 64%. That's not great. Uh, you, you definitely might want to optimize your marketing or even move the show to a smaller venue. So finally, an example from uh, energy management. Uh, this is a power consumption anomaly observations. observation. Here we are monitoring the power consumption and have detected that uh, around 11 o'clock, the consumption is much higher than it should be. Now this might mean that uh, something has been left on that shouldn't have been left on or isn't normally on at this time. Or it could even be something more serious like uh, an oven or a stove being left on in the kitchen cafeteria, so even a fire risk. You might want to increase security or save energy costs by turning it off right now or preventing it from being left on in the future. Now it's been very interesting working uh, with the power consumption data because it can, you can really read surprisingly much about uh, human behavior from it. That was a, a little bit surprising. This is of course not generally being measured very accurately today, but uh, you need special hardware, but uh, I think we'll see more of that in the future. So those were a uh, few examples, but we actually want to go much further. And one of the ways we want to do that is through pattern discovery. So we want, uh, or we identified some business requirements, AI-related business requirements that uh, no current technology can fully satisfy. And our requirement, basic requirement, is that we want to discover unknown event patterns with operational impact that hold some business insight. So a very simple example of that might be uh, the insight that customers who do not make a second purchase within three months tend to become, in most cases, inactive customers. So with an insight like that, you could potentially try to engage customers at the end of that period to try to nudge them over to the uh, group that becomes regular customers or loyal customers. A little bit more about uh, the requirements here. We want autonomous unsupervised pattern discovery, and it needs to work in structured, symbolic, and temporal data streams. So uh, structured, symbolic, the, the fact that the data is structured and symbolic is kind of a big deal because it means we really can't use any neural network architectures. Uh, at least it's not clear how. And we also have this requirement of the technology being able to generate human readable models because uh, we need to actually convey the business insight. 
and uh, you won't get that with anything but the simplest of neural networks. And we need the maximum model complexity to be adjustable. We also need the technology to be able to estimate the business value and rank uh, any patterns it discovers because we do expect a lot of noise in this data. There are some valid patterns, like for example, that uh, customers put products in their cart before buying, which is just completely uninteresting. So we, we really need this filtered out for this technology to be effective. Now, we wanted to make this happen, but we were left with uh, the reality that we were not funded to do basic AI research. That is simply not what the money our investors gave us was for. So what we did is uh, we got in touch with Christine here at IIIM and managed to get him on board and collaborated on Arani's grant application for the fund practical research projects. And we ended up receiving two years of funding to have IIIM work on this problem with us. The project got started officially just last month. So we're very grateful to be able to uh, realize this vision, uh, thanks to IIIM and Aranis. Finally, I uh, just wanted to share with you a vision uh, of how AI is likely to change the way industry operates. So in the future enterprise, automated, unified, and real-time data analysis of all business data will be continuously occurring based on AI technologies. And you will see less and less of uh, manual data analysis. People's focus will move away from raw data or micro data to uh, accessible and actionable AI-derived information. And uh, this will massively empower employees and make them more effective. A fresh list of high-value tasks is uh, always available to employees, where the tasks are prioritized by business value. So it's always pretty clear what the most effective use of your time is at work. AI-powered predictions will be continuously produced and analyzed, and unexpected business processes and operations patterns will be automatically discovered and explained to human operators. The right employees will be notified immediately when scenarios with operational impact that require reaction are detected or predicted. And enterprises that embrace AI have a tremendous, tremendous competitive advantage. Uh, we'll be at the exhibition session at the end of the day. That's all I have for now, so thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Um, I think we have time for one question, if there is one. Yep. I have a question regarding uh, in general maybe of AI in Iceland for the size of the country and size of businesses here in Iceland. How much does that affect for the application of AI in terms of you know, large amounts of data, which is it could be bigger companies in different countries? In Iceland we have a lot of small companies. Does that play a factor in, in what we can use AI for? Yeah, yeah, it does affect, uh, so for most machine learning problems, you do need considerably large data sets. So we're talking tens of thousands, at least, of examples. So in some cases, that's really challenging here in Iceland because it's a small market. Uh, if you look at more at like internet of things and sensors, then maybe it's not such a big, big problem. Uh, but it also, it's also possible we'll see uh, machine learning methods actually being able to learn from smaller amounts of data. But you're right about the core issue right now. Yeah. 